Hello, internet, and welcome to an episode of editing in Photoshop Camera Raw. And this episode is going to focus around editing JPEG files because a lot of people getting started in photography um, will probably be shooting a lot of JPEGs and some people will be shooting RAW. Um, but it's very slow to take up uh, and get used to shooting RAW. So most of my students in high school and some students outside of school uh, will have a library of JPEG files. And most of them have started shooting RAW, uh, but most will be shooting JPEGs most of the time. Uh, so this is just a really quick example of editing JPEGs, how to get the most out of them, and just a quick introduction to Camera Raw and how to use it. And first things first is if we have two files here, we have a, a beautiful Leica file, it's a DNG, it's a RAW file, it takes a while to load, and it is a large file, but it is a very beautiful file. Uh, but you can't really tell the difference between this one, which is about 25 megabytes, and this one here, which is about 10 or 11. And if you open up the JPEG, you can't really tell the difference. These, these two files are straight out of camera. But the difference comes when you edit them. And so what I want to show you quickly is if you open up the DNG or the RAW file in Photoshop and drag it in, it opens up in something called Camera RAW. Whereas if you open up a JPEG, in the same program, it'll open it up in Photoshop. And we don't want that right now. We want to focus on Camera Raw because it's easier to understand and it's easier to play with. So how do you do that? The first things first is we go to Edit, we go down to Preferences, we go down to Camera Raw, and we click on that. And we can go all the way down to the bottom here to JPEG and TIFF, Handling, and we want to select JPEG. And it says here, open, automatically open JPEGs with settings. It's a little bit misleading. We want to open all supported JPEGs. And so once we selected that, automatically open all supported JPEGs, we can click OK. And then what actually happens now is when we take our JPEG file, we could drag it into Photoshop and it'll open up our JPEG into Camera Raw. We could see that here it says JPEG. Now, what we can do with this is play first with the crop modes and we just understand what this is what's actually happening here uh, one to one is basically a square image is a square image and two by three is the same shape as most camera sensors so if you have a Canon Nikon or a Sony camera your aspect ratio or the shape of the sensor is about two units high and three units across if you go down to three by four that's the same shape as Olympus and Panasonic sensors um, it's also the same shape as standard definitions uh, television as well if you go down to 9 by 16, it's the same aspect ratio as high definition TV. So if you are planning on doing a slideshow for a high definition TV, then I would highly recommend um, having your crop set to 9 by 16. So if I have a 9 by 16 here, now this image is 3 by 2. So if I open up 9 by 16 and try to make it as large as possible, I lose a lot of the top and the bottom. So that's kind of the thing that you have to really think about if you are cropping. One of the things I have to always think about is um, is I print to A4, and to print A4 is aspect ratio is 210 by 297 units. And so what actually happens is if I try and open this up as large as I can, I lose a little bit of the left or the right, and I have to make a choice about that. I don't lose a whole lot, but it's still a lot enough for me to, well, it's enough for me to actually worry about that sometimes. Um, so let's start with a quick crop here. I'm planning on printing this to A4. And the first thing I'm noticing is that there is a stroll in the background. And also it's not such a straight image. You can see the background, the, the line of the building is dipping down. So first things first is I'm going to crop until I can get rid of the stroller. And you notice that uh, the aspect ratio stays the same. I can move my mouse around and it stays at the same shape of 210 by 297. I then move my mouse to the edge corner and I can actually move now my image and rotate it. So that's sort of where I want it to be. It's probably not the best, but let's see what happens. Now I've straightened out the image. It's a little bit better. Uh, I could do a little bit more, but We'll just leave it at this for the time being. And let's take a look now at the tools on the right-hand side. 
First things first is temperature. Now, your camera can control white balance. Um, basically, if you're shooting indoors in tungsten light, you have a yellow light, so then your camera will have a blue tint to it. If you're shooting out in the sun, it's pretty much the same thing. If you're shooting in the shade, you have a blue tint to the light, so then the camera will add yellow, and so on and so on. So if I go right, I could make the day look warmer. I could look the image look warm. And if I go to the left, I could make the image of the day look colder. For the time being, I'm actually usually quite happy with the white balance that comes out of uh, my camera or any camera nowadays. But a good way to make sure that you have correct white balance is look at something that is supposed to be white. So down here, I know that this is a white, uh, white canvas that this person is uh, drawing on. So this looks white to me, and so I'll keep it that way. If you ever happen to have images that look like this, uh, sometimes it does happen, um, you'll look down here and it says, well, that is supposed to be white, but it's got a blue tint to it. So you could bring it up, and if it starts going a bit yellow, bring it back down. Otherwise, you could just leave it as shot and don't have to worry too much about it. The same thing with tint. I don't use it often, but you can get interesting effects. Going right gives us magenta. Going left gives us a green tint. And it's, it's very rare that it's used, but you can get some interesting experimental effects with that, and you can get interesting moods from it. So it depends on how you'd like to use your colors, and also depending on the kind of colors that you, your, uh, the kind of subjects that you're shooting. So for example, if you're shooting a forest and there's lots of greens, it would probably make sense to see what it would look like if you increased the green tint, or if you turned it into magenta. You know, it depends on, um, on the subject and what you want to get out of it. Uh, exposure is pretty uh, simple. It's basically turning up the brightness and darkness, and it works with stops. So you can see here, plus 1.0. So our cameras work in third stops. So for example, if it was a really, really bright day and I couldn't make my camera any darker, and so most of my pictures are like this, let's say one stop overexposed, you can uh, salvage it and bring it down to uh, however you feel. So for example, this is a little bit dark, uh, this person's pants and the background's a little bit dark and I'd like to see more of the the painting. So I'm just going to increase that by one third of a stop. Just that a little bit more. So then we have a little bit more pop in the shirt and in the hat, but we'll fix the rest of that later if it's a bit too bright. Contrast is really interesting because what contrast does is it controls how steep the change is between bright pixels and dark pixels. So if I increase this here, you could see that the, uh, the darks get darker and the brights get a little bit brighter. So it, it actually increases the differences between those two areas here. If I go the other way, I can add haze because now that the transition from dark to light is a little bit softer, it's a little bit smoother. And if you have an image that, if you have an image that comes out like this, which is uh, low in contrast, it has a bit of haze, you can actually bring it up and then you could um, get rid of the haze. Highlights can pretty much just controls the, the bright areas like this person's shirt here. Um, and the white areas on the on the floor without damaging any of the high, uh, the shadows. So if I bring the high, I think the highlights are a bit too bright, so I'm going to bring it down. I want you to pay attention to this area here and his shirt. So if I bring it back to zero, and then back down, and up again, and back down. So I like that there because now I can actually see detail in the white areas and his drawing. Um, the shadows, I'd like to open up his trousers and maybe the background a little bit so I can see a little bit more detail. So if I bring it down, it'll be a bit too dark, but if I bring it up, I can now see a little bit of the detail in his uh, trousers, um, in the floor, and in the background a little bit. But I just increased the shadows a little bit, but now I've got a little bit of haze in the shadows. So I'm going to increase the contrast up a little bit uh, just to get rid of the haze. Let's make that uh, 24. Yep, looks fine. And now let's take a look at the whites and the blacks. Whenever I look at whites and black, it basically tells me what is the white point, what is the whitest part of the image. So if I hold down Alt on my, uh, on my PC, I'm just holding down Alt, and I click on whites, it turns everything black. And so if I increase whites, it's showing me on the image what's blowing to white, what's going completely and utterly white. So if I go back down, 
Um, if I bring it all the way down, nothing really happens. But if I bring it up, I'm starting to see little flecks of pixels. And those pixels are basically telling me that those areas are completely white. And that's kind of okay. I only want a little bit because I want to tell uh, Photoshop that only a few pixels I want to be completely white. So now I know that I've got, I have completely white pixels all the way down to completely black pixels, which brings me to the blacks. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Hold down Alt, click on black, and it shows me white. If I go all the way down, it shows me that these areas here go completely black. And if I go all the way up, nothing really happens. So if I go over here, back to the middle, and I keep going, I want a little bit of the background, a little bit of the person in complete blackness. So those areas there are completely black. I let go. And now I have on my histogram, I have a few black pixels and a teeny tiny amount of white pixels, a lot of highlights, a lot of shadows, and a whole lot of midtones. Now let's take a look at Clarity. Clarity does something very similar to contrast, um, except it also kind of sharpens the edges of pixels. So if I increase the Clarity, it looks like as if everything's getting sharper and harder. And if I go the opposite way, it looks like as if everything goes softer. So it increases the differences between uh, brights and darks, but it also increases the edges. So it gives us this look of um, sharpness and softness. Now, I don't like soft pictures. I like to th I like to have things that are really punchy. So I'm going to increase this a lot. I don't want to oh, I don't want to increase this by a lot. I only want to increase it just a little bit. Uh, Twenty seems a little bit too much for me. Some of you guys might not tell the difference, but I like it around 15. I don't like to push clarity too much. If I'm doing a portrait, I can push it down and it softens the face a little bit. So clarity is really useful if you just want a quick soften of the face. But for me, um, 15 seems fine. Now, vibrance controls color saturation and increases or decreases the saturation of dull colors. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's take a look at all the really, really saturated colors, the oranges, uh, this blue here. Um, those are really, really, really punchy, saturated colors. And the colors like this purple and maybe this brown here, this is actually yellowish orange, um, they're not very punchy. So if I increase brightness, uh, the, sorry, the vibrance, okay, you could see that the blues and the purples and all the oranges really pop out. I haven't actually gotten any increases in the face because um, it's actually kind of a dull kind of uh, skin tone. Uh, skin tones actually don't get touched a lot by vibrance, so I'm increasing most of the colors here in general um, without actually damaging the man's uh, skin tones. I mean, it does a little bit, but not by a whole lot. Whereas the orange and the purple and the blues, they get pushed up by a whole heap. Notice how the blues and the oranges get pushed first, and then the purples catch up afterwards. That's because even though the purple looks a little bit dull, it still has some saturation to it. And the blues and the oranges are um, deeply saturated, so they get pushed up a little bit. This is really good if you have lots of landscapes uh, and you like lots of colors in your landscapes and you're shooting skies and, and dirt and things like that and the ground. Um, and it doesn't really affect humans too much, which is a good thing. Um, I'm just going to push the vibrance up just a little bit just so I can get some really nice purples on the man's trousers. So around 50... I'm happy with. Okay. And saturation basically just turns up everything or turns down everything. Now, this is called a poor man's black and white. So if I bring it, if I bring saturation all the way down, I can get black and white. If I bring saturation all the way up, everything just goes like nuclear. Um, so I don't really touch a lot of saturation unless I really want a lot of saturation. So maybe I'll just bring it up by five, you know, a subtle punch in color and nothing really special. So now we have a edited image. If I go to save image, uh, I'm going to save this as JPEG uh, Sydney. Okay. There we go. JPEG Sydney. And we're just going to give that a save and click done. And now I have the first JPEG and the second JPEG. Whoops, sorry, wrong one. Here we go. So I have the, this JPEG here and then the JPEG Sydney edit. And let's take a look at these side by side. 
and you can see there is a huge, huge difference between the image on the right and the image on the left. We can see what's going on in the on the chalkboard. We could see what's going on with the colors. We kind of got rid of distracting elements. We have a clean background, sort of. And we can see a lot more detail in the shirt, a lot more detail in the trousers, um, some more punchy colors. We're a little bit closer. And the background uh, just has a really lovely color tone to it. It's it's mostly like a browny blue kind of color, so brown and blue. Whereas here, it was really dull um, and didn't have anything interesting. And we've maintained a lot of the detail. We can see that uh, the man's um, hand has a lot of color. If I zoom in on here, okay, you could automatically see there is a huge, huge difference in terms of detail and quality um, and color. And I think that this one is a much more interesting image than this one over here. And that is editing JPEG images.